All right, guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Now, today we're going to be making a program that can change your background automatically. Now, everyone loves being a Windows user and just being able to, you know, set a fresh new background every now and then. It's a fun job. And why not do it programmatically and have fun with it and learn some stuff while we're doing it? Now, I know that was a lot of words, but basically today we're just going to be writing a very simple program to do that for us. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. It's just going to be a C Sharp console app. And let's go ahead and name it Background Generator. And we can go ahead and click Create. All right, guys, so we have a blank application here, and there's going to be a few things we need to do. So first, we're going to just delete what they have as this default stuff here. All right, guys, we're going to start off here by creating a namespace. A namespace is just kind of a nice way to organize like classes and things into this container, if you will. So we're going to call it um, change background and then go ahead and open up our brackets here. And then right away, we're going to create a class and we're going to call it um, background changer. I know it's very similar to the namespace, but whatever. And right inside of this class, we're going to create our main method. That way we can run some code later. We're going to just say static void main, open up these parentheses, string arcs and get some brackets in there as well. All right, guys, so right above this main method here, we're going to create a couple of variables that we need to use in order to change our background. All right, guys, now the first variable today that we're going to be creating is called public const int. And first, we're making this public to the whole program here, and we're making a constant, meaning that the value cannot change once it's set throughout the life of the program. It's going to be an integer because it's just a solid, nice number. And then we're going to call it, and you need to use all caps here, SPI underscore set desk wallpaper. And we're going to set that equal to 20. Now you might ask yourself, what in the hell is SPI set desk wallpaper? Why do we name it that? What is all this? And I'm going to explain that right now. Now, if you need to change the background, we need to access settings inside of the user profile inside of Windows. Now you might ask yourself what a user profile is. Now, basically it's just that every user on a Windows computer, you know, I might have a profile for myself, Sean, and maybe, you know, my mom uses this computer too, or my dad does, and he has his own profile, and she has her own profile. But essentially, this user profile is just some personalized settings that we can change, and one of those is a background. Now, if you want to know why we named it the way we did, if you actually take this and punch it into Google, you'll notice a couple of things come up, and one of them that's a common theme is the system parameters info, and this seems to be a function. Now, if we go in here, there's a couple of different ones. There's a info A and there's an info W, but essentially there's a couple of parameters we can feed it. And this is ways that we can change um, some system settings. And one of those would be the wallpaper, for example. So in our example, we have the set wallpaper. So desk wallpaper. And you'll notice that this goes ahead and retrieves the full path of the uh, wallpaper location and you know all that we need to use this and some other parameters to be able to set this wallpaper for us all right now keep that in mind and let's go back to the code and if we're smart enough we can go ahead and give ourselves some notes so we remember what these things do so we can say use to set wallpaper and then right under it we're going to need another integer so we're going to say public const int and then we're going to say spif underscore update in file is equal to one. Now this is another integer that we're going to be using to change the settings for this user profile. And I can go ahead and explain each one, but I think it would just be beneficial for you guys to look it up and read over it. I will put that document in the link in the description and go ahead and feel free to comment if you have any questions. But you guys came here for one thing and that one thing is, you know, how do I change the background? So let's just go ahead and keep coding things. Now the third and final int that we're going to need is public const int once again. And then SPIF underscore send change. And that is going to be equal to two. All right, guys, we have all of our integers out of the way. Now we need to focus on using something called a DLL. Now I can go on and on about DLLs all day, but essentially they are sprinkled all throughout Windows and many of them are necessary for the operation of the operating system. Uh, one of them that we're concerned about today is called user32 DLL. We're gonna be using these integers and user32 DLL to modify some settings in the user profile and basically render the UI differently. And the way we're going to be rendering that differently is because we are changing the background setting for my user profile, Sean. So now that we have that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and give ourselves some square brackets. Then we're going to say DLL or DLL import like this. Then open up your parentheses. Now the first parameter is which DLL we're trying to import, which is user32.dll. Now this next parameter is called char set, and we're going to be setting that equal to 
char set dot auto. Now you might be asking yourself what this little line here is doing, and I don't want to go into too many details, but basically uh, it has to do with string marshalling, and marshalling is uh, you know taking things from memory representation, you know, like the hex value, to get it ready for transmission. Or it could also, you know, be getting it ready for storage. But anyways, we don't really need to worry about that too much. Now I'll add a comma, and we're going to add one more parameter, and that parameter is called set last error is equal to true. And all this is doing is indicating whether the callee sets the error. All right, guys, now that we have that line out of the way, um, we actually notice that there's a little error here. And if we go ahead and click on it, you'll notice that it needs us to use this uh, system runtime interrupt services. So we're going to use that here that automatically imports it at the top. And now that some of these errors should start going away. All right, guys, now that we have that, you notice we still have one more error and it's saying that it must be specified on a method marked static or extern. And we're going to do that right now. So what we're going to say is public static extern. We need to add these three things and then say int and then call this function system parameters info. And then go ahead and open up these brackets here. We're going to have an int u action, an int u param, and then a string LP, lpv param. And finally, we're going to have another int. We're going to call it fu win i ni. So guys, I know this is a lot to ex explain and understand and, and grasp right now, but basically, you know, we're importing this DLL. We are using these parameters. We're going to be using it here. We're calling this system parameters info function to modify um, certain things about our user profile, and it could also be used to modify other things. But in our instance, we're going to be doing that. All right, guys, now that we have all the hard stuff out of the way, now comes the fun part where we actually get to work on the uh, background stuff in the code. So what we're going to do is go ahead and hop inside of your main method, and we're going to need a random number. So we're going to say random, random is new random. And I know that was a lot to say that word, but we're just creating a brand new random object here. We're naming it random and we're making sure to create it on this line. Then we're going to generate a random integer. So we're going to say int index is equal to random dot next. And then we're going to open the parentheses. Now the first parameter is an inclusive one. So we, we need to tell it what number to start at. And we want to start at zero because we're going to be using an array in a little bit. And that array obviously starts at index zero. And then the second parameter is not inclusive. So we're going to put five. So that means we want numbers between one and four to be generated, not including five. All right, guys, now that we have a random number and we have some of this fancy stuff up here, why don't we go ahead and download some backgrounds or reference some sort of background folder that we're going to be using. So what you want to do is go ahead and either reference a folder you already have full of backgrounds you like, or you can go to unsplash.com, which has tons of these free images here that we can use. And uh, I don't know, uh, what I did earlier is look up 1920 by 1080 images, and it comes up with quite a bit. So I went ahead and downloaded them to a folder on my desktop, which I have right here. And in this folder, what I did was just go ahead and rename them from whatever gibberish it was to one, two, three, four, and five. Notice I have five different backgrounds and I renamed them to these numbers because it's going to be easier to use. So now that we have those images on our desktop, we're going to go ahead and say string and an array. We're going to say image names is equal to and open up this array here. And then we're just going to start naming them off. So we're going to say one dot JPEG and then comma, you know, another set of quotes here, two dot JPEG comma quotes again. And we can kind of just copy this and then change the numbers. So we could do this, that and that. And then we're just going to say three, four and five and then end it with a semicolon. Now we actually need to tell this program where to look for our image files. So we're going to say string image path is equal to, and then put the at symbol here, and then two quotes and a semicolon. And this at symbol basically is saying like, you know, we're free to use some of these uh, characters you would normally have to escape, such as like a backslash, for example. That way we can easily put a file path in the string. So for my particular file path, mine is stored at C users, Sean, and then desktop, and then backgrounds, and then another backslash. Now here, now that we know we're inside of our directory, we can go ahead and you know use this array here and this random integer to randomly select a picture inside of that directory. So what we're gonna do is concatenate the string by using a plus sign, and then we're just going to say image names. So pick something out of image names at this random index that we generated. So now that we have all that out of the way, now we can actually just say set wallpaper, and that is going to be done by the following line. Now this is where everything comes together. So we're going to say system parameters info, which we can copy from up there. And then we're going to open up these quotes. 
or sorry, these parentheses. The first parameter we're using in here is called SPI underscore set desk wallpaper, then add a comma. Then we're going to say zero and then add another comma. Right here, we're going to reference image path, which is the full path to where our image is. And then we're gonna do SPIF underscore update in file, and then put a little pipe here, or we can use SPIF underscore send change. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna explain this too much, but if you wanna learn more about this function or any of the stuff we're doing here, go ahead and look it up in the link in the description. But essentially, we are using this entire function with all the parameters, our image path, and everything to change the background. So that is all it takes, and now we're going to run our program and make sure that it works. So let me move this out of the way, and you'll notice I already have a random background here. So let me go ahead and run the program, and we should have a brand new background set. So it's just fired up. We have our new console here, and you'll notice the background has just changed. So let's go ahead and exit here. Let's go ahead and run it again to see if our background changes again. And you'll notice that every time I run it, it has a brand new awesome background for us to look at. So guys, that's going to summarize this um, tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it. And please comment down below if you have any thoughts or suggestions or comments or questions. I know that was a lot, but just if you have anything at all, go ahead and comment down below and I'd be happy to help you out. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you guys for watching once again. And I'll see you in the next one.